Tom Bradish, and I'm coming to you live from HPE Discover in Madrid, Spain. And I am a general manager and vice president of the business unit that handles the IoT and Edge systems for our company. And I'm very excited to be with a special guest here with uh, Matt Harris. And Matt, tell us a little bit about yourself and your company and what you're doing, the exciting things you're doing out at the racetrack. Um, Glad to be here, by the way, and helping you and show off what we're doing together as a company. So I'm Matt Harris, head of IT. Been with the team 20 years this year. Um, so the last five years have been amazing for us, obviously with the five double world championships, um, helped by our partners, um, particularly yourselves these, this year. We've made some step changes in what we're doing, particularly in the factory with some compute, but at the edge as well. Um, and next season, we've got some exciting things coming. So IT plays a big role in your success. Oh yeah, um, without IT and without it realistically we can't sure. um, perform, we can't do things as a team. Now we have to make sure that IT's not seen realistically, we want to make sure the team can perform at their best, but doing what they want to do, not worrying about the IT. Yes. So yes. we want to try and make sure that we're almost invisible, but giving them all the tools that they need to do their job. Tell us a little bit about, you could brag a little bit about your success recently, <laughs> tell us about that. So the last five years have been amazing obviously, um, the five times world champion, double five world times, yeah. five times double world champions. I'm lucky enough to have a sixth as well um, from a few years earlier, but the last five have been incredible. Um, I started off years ago, when I started off in um, IT, in Formula One, realistically we had maybe some ISDNs, maybe a satellite telephone. So, wow, so wow. data at yeah. the edge, there wasn't much. We had sensors on the car, but maybe 10 or 20 sensors and maybe a few meg of data you were, yes, you were generating. Yeah. Now we're half a terabyte of data at the edge. Yeah, we have a, an internet of things that most people turn around and you know, they think about the, your sensors, your, maybe your mobile phones. 300 sensors on the car. 300 sensors 300 on the car. 300 sensors doing various different jobs and for And you're us. measuring the data at the edge, which yes. is the racetrack, exactly which is your that. garages. You're measuring that in terabytes now. Yeah, so we have about half a terabyte per race weekend from the two cars. Mm -hmm. That data we then are using real time as well as historically to turn around and make sure we're improving what's going on. Real time at the edge, we have to turn around and make sure we make strategy decisions or we make um, changes to the car, improvements to the car. All it is based on data though. Yes. Even yes, if Lewis yes, yes. or Valtteri turn around and tell us something, we'll always be looking to try and understand in data yes, what they've yes. said. You, know, you may have heard Lewis on stage a few minutes ago, he said the same thing. They'll, they'll have a, diff, you know, a discussion to turn around and say what the data is telling them or what the driver is saying. Now that might just be a terminology thing, yes, and then yes. learning about what one driver says, how they describe it, what the data is saying realistically is happening. So we're always computing yes. at real time. We have to make decisions in, in seconds. If we don't do that, it's the difference between um, P1 or P2 in qualifying. Amen. Yeah. So a turnaround of a few seconds to get data, yeah. make a decision, is in really, really important that we have that information at the edge. We have it in the factory as well, but the edge is critical, particularly in qualifying. So you said something interesting. It's not just a matter of collecting and analyzing data, but it's how quickly you can respond to those insights you derive and you mine from the data. Very much. And therefore, that's the world of control systems and operational systems, or operational technology, as we say. And we're very excited, because not only the IT world, but the OT world, the operational technology world, we've entered, in fact, at this uh, particular conference called HP Discover, we have announced that we're in the operational technology business and we attach to our edge line systems, control systems, that can hopefully in the future help as well. Yeah, so um, yes. we've actually, um, we've got some of the um, compute cartridges here that we, we use. Let's see that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so uh, basically. So this um, is a CPU blade for the, both the Moonshot and the edge line? Yeah, that you're so, using? and we actually use it in both places. So the Moonshot um, back in your data center. Yeah. So Moonshot, we have um, several thousand of these we've got in the factory. Several thousand CPU So blades. basically CPUs rather than the actual cartridges, but these are what we use for our CFD. So yes, in yes. the data center we're using this, but actually for next year. That's fluid dynamics. Yeah, sorry, computational, yes. computational, computational fluid, fluid dynamics. Fluid. So for those that don't understand, it's a wind tunnel in a computer. So we chuck fluid Crucial over. Crucial to creating the optimal design of your oh, automobile. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. what you see of the car is all, um, will have gone through CFD and a wind tunnel mm. and various software simulations as well. Mm -hmm. Um, what we use the Moonshot for there is, we've actually got a, a regulation on how we can most efficiently use CPU time. It's not necessarily the fastest, and actually Moonshot gives us the optimum way of doing that at the moment with present technology. But next year we're going to be turning around and using this at the track. We've been oh, doing... Okay, let me just... Yeah. This is exciting. So yep. you've got the Moonshot going with your um, computational fluid dynamics yep. back in the data center using high performance computing technology. Yep. But you said you're interested now in shifting this out to your edge, as we would call it, which is your racetrack. Yep. And down in the pit as yep. well. 
and you're able to do that with the exact same CPU blade or CPU technology. So tell us how you're going to shift some of that workload out to the edge and why that's important. Yeah, no problem. So we'll end up probably looking at two different uh, versions of the blade. So there's a couple of different requirements we've got, maybe more compute or maybe more graphically related. So there's two different requirements. Um, but in the factory, it's, it's about compute. We've also got edge uses, which we'll look at and we'll talk about in a second in the factory, but what we actually practiced and tested during Brazil race weekend. So if you imagine actually probably our most crucial race weekend this weekend, it's where we won the championship this, this year, we were still testing new technology. Now, part of that's because we trust you and our other partners to turn around and test things during a crucial time. But this was for us to turn around and prove out technology for next year, because we ah. can't stand still can't wait right. to turn around and so test this next year. You're going to get an edge by being at the edge with Edge Line. Exactly. If I can use it. And Edge Line is a brand name that uh, yep. uh, mimics the capability, but it's ruggedized for the edge environment, but it mimics the high performance computing capability back in your data centers. Definitely. And, and to be honest, that's part of the reason why we're looking to use these compute cartridges at the track. We're going to be taking what was a, a standard compute unit yes. at the track. We have problems with heat tolerance, with environmental... It's not ruggedized for the hostile no. environments. Yeah. Um, management of it, they're all piecemeal, they're individual units. I've got a number of members of my team here that they're, they're quite happy to be removing those and going to actually a, a centrally managed unit. Which you could do with Edgeline because it has enterprise class capability, Correct. but yet it's at the edge, which is your racetrack and exactly your Exactly that. So we're, we're using ILO to turn around and centrally manage the units rather than individual pieces of kit around the building. We go from 16 individual units to one um, chassis with four of these. So this is the Edgeline system, the yep. EL4000 that, that you're referring to. Yep. And basically, we've got four cartridges that we can put into the side of the unit. Temperature shock and vibration hardened for yep. the edge. And we can turn around and actually remove complexity, remove the number of moving components, but actually it is able to work in those harsher environments. It's built and designed for that. We can get better performance, mm -hmm. more reliability, so really, IT are getting out of the way, but actually given a step change in performance to the race engineers. We said about the importance of data change and understanding the data. If we can give systems that are quicker, faster, more performant at the edge, actually that's a massive difference to our engineers, the drivers. Well, if we can help you win with Moonshot back in the data center, and now we can help you win again in the future with edge line at the edge, that's quite thrilling, and I think I, I speak for my entire company how much we appreciate this relationship. Being, helping you win and helping you do what you do, it's just amazing. Congratulations again on your success, and it's an absolute privilege to work with you. So oh, it's, you it's, it's great partnership to have for ourselves as well. Thank you.